Good morning, everyone. One of the things I've learned being a Jesuit and following in the footsteps of St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, I've been lucky enough to have been to Spain, to have seen the place where he was brought up, and then to walk that Camino, that path for where he was brought up to Manresa, where he had some really significant experiences. But one of the things I've learned is that Ignatius, I remember originally he was, a, he was a soldier, he was a courtier, and he was full of pride and full of vanity. I can relate to this myself, obviously from my own story. And then he was injured, do you remember? The cannonball shattered his leg, broke it in multiple places, and he was convalescing. And while he was convalescing, he was reading two books, Life of the Saints, one on the life of Christ, but he was daydreaming about his life, what he might do. One was the romantic, winning the hand of this lady, the kind of vanity, the ego-based stuff. And the other was, he was dreaming about outdoing the saints, or giving his life up for Christ. So two different types of daydreams, and then two different types of results. What actually happened, what happened inside him. But it was using his imagination to project himself into the future. And you know the way your imagination can be a source of great joy and ethics and bring us to somewhere good. And also your imagination can bring you to some pretty dark places. It can be ego-based, it can be really selfish. With your permission, I'd like to lead you through an Ignatian meditation. Will that be okay? I'm going to do it anyway, right? <laughs> the first thing is the, to get your body ready. This is a really important thing in Ignatian spirituality, the, the preparation. So just find a position. Some people find it's helpful to open your hands, put your hands on your lap as a gesture of openness. For some reason, it helps to dispose ourselves. Second thing is his preparation prayer. Ignatius suggests, he says that we have to direct all of our intentions and actions and thoughts to God. We have to give ourselves completely. So not holding something back or not thinking about something else, but give ourselves completely to God. So just make that little act of faith inside yourself. Third thing is to get in touch. What do you want? What do you really want? What's your deepest desire? Ignatius says, what is really going to fill your heart? What's going to satisfy your soul? Just get in touch. With what, is, what does God want for you? It could be something to do with family. It could be something to do with healing. It could be some fault I have to correct. It could be some courage I need. It could be some decision I have to take. Just take a moment in silence. Get in touch with that, with that desire for yourself. The next step is to imagine that you meet Jesus directly. So imagine you meet him at the bank of the lake in John's Gospel. It says he's cooking fish over the fire. So imagine that place. Imagine the, the lakeside. Imagine the water. Imagine the vegetation. Imagine the smell, the smell of the fish. Maybe it's, it's a warm day, maybe the heat. And then especially imagine Jesus, what does he look like? Like what's his face like? And how does he look at you? This loving gaze. 
So imagine Jesus looks directly at you. And how does he see you? Or what does it feel like to be seen in that way? And then, in your imagination, I want you to have a conversation. So conversation is two-way. So you ask, ask Jesus for what you need. And then you listen. You listen to what he has to say. So certain things that you want to you want to say, you want to ask. And find the words. Have that conversation. So just take that moment in silence to have that conversation. If you're getting distracted, just come back to the face of Jesus. Just come back to your intention, your desire. What do you say? And then listen. Listen to what he says to you. Make sure you get everything off your chest. Make sure you ask all those questions. So then just as we come to the end of this conversation, just take your leave. Just remembering you can come back here at any time. That Jesus is always here for us. That this is an ongoing conversation. This is something you can pick up again. And then just make your way back to this church, this moment. And again, another, another key Jesuit thing, I want you to look back at the last 10 minutes and just notice, notice how you were, notice what, what worked, notice if you could see the face of Jesus, if you could hear the words, and just learn from this, what works for me, how can I communicate with, with Jesus, with Christ, what helps me, what doesn't help me, and then finally, make a decision about what you need to do in order to be more with Christ. What do I need to do? Some concrete decisions, some changes in my life, some commitment to fix something, to talk to someone, to resolve something. So just make that little decision with inside yourself.
And finally, we just end with the Our Father. We're just going to say this very slowly. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Ignatius, pray for us. Thank you. God bless.